I'm here with Carlo once again, and uh, Carlo has a new product that uh, he's been putting out. Um, I've been using hot foam tools for years. Uh, he's got a whole line, but he wanted to combine a bunch of tools together. That was the whole concept here, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And um, he's gonna he's just gonna show us yeah. what what this is all about. Yeah. So my my main focus again being a service to the community as I th this product is basically an accumulation of knowledge that I've built over the last four years. I've always wanted to put hot wire foam cutters in the hand of hobbyists because through the main manufacturers, their stuff's pretty expensive, you know, especially sure. if you don't use the tool all the time. Um, so again, I wanted to kind of have a versatile tool that, you know, somebody can buy just one unit and they can use it for years. I mean, it, it would last for a long time. So that's where the, the combination foam cutter came from, is it's a tabletop cutter, a horizontal cutter, a hand cutter, and a bendable wire cutter. So it actually has four separate functions in just one cutter or one unit. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to do this as sort of an unboxing. So if you were to purchase one of these and I would send it to you, um, the retail price is uh, $90 US and it's flat rate shipping, so shipping included. It's just 90 bucks, you got a cutter. That's so, crazy, yeah. especially with four separate tools. Yeah, four separate tools for 90, including the power supply, including wire, I mean, all that stuff. It's all I mean, those power supplies alone can run like, yeah, yeah. I wanna say 40, 50 bucks. Oh, at least, at least, yeah, at least. I mean, some of them, I mean, the more inexpensive ones will be about 50 bucks, but if you want variable control and temperature, and I mean, it gets upwards $150, $200 just for the power supply. And that's actually through hotwirefoamcutterinfo.com and the new letscutfoam.com. Um, that was the biggest issue. That's always what I get people talking to me about is what power supply do I need? What power supply do I need? And what I did was, again, it took me about a year or so to completely develop this product. It took at least a solid three months, maybe four months um, to research just a power supply that would work in combination with different wire gauges. Um, I had wires sent out to um, a couple people here in the area, a couple people in the community just doing um, testing for me. Hey, what doesn't work? What does work? Is your wire breaking? All that kind of thing. Nice. So it's like I said, it's, I've taken a lot to sort of develop this, but um, here's, here's what we're going to get. When the product is shipped to you, um, you're basically going to see it packaged very similarly to this. and. Um, what you're going to get is a uh, solid state power supply, and this is rated for international use. So I have different um, input plugs for the UK, uh, for Europe, or for Europe, um, wow. and, for, and for Australia. So, well, that's crazy. so this can really go anywhere in the world. And that was my main focus too, is I didn't want to limit it to just the US. Sure, sure. So this power supply is rated for international use. You just get a different cord depending on what country you're in. What I wired into the end um, is just two female snap bullet connectors, um, which is all you're going to ever have to use is just this one power supply. And my focus nice. was to have the entire cutter based around the handheld unit. So that way you don't have to unplug and replug, you know, the power supply and there's all these different functions and all these different components. Mm -hmm. um, this handheld cutter is the cutter for the entire combination foam cutter. Wow. What we have uh, is you'll get two packages um, like this and I'll have it labeled as 20 gauge and 24 gauge. 20 gauge is for the bendable cutter, 24 is for our straight wire cutter. Got it. So we'll just do the straight wire just for, um, illustrative purposes. One end, I'll have a uh, ring terminal, and on the other end, I have this folded over just so no one pricks their finger. So at the ends, I have thumb screws and wing nuts. Uh, that way, once you get the wire attached, um, it'll be nice, firm, and secure. But one of the things that I recommend doing is actually putting the wire on the back side. Um, I've had some people where, um, as they twist down this wing nut, it actually pinches the wire. So I usually just say put it on the back side and that way nothing happens. So this little excess, not to worry about that, that really doesn't heat up. Okay. Um, so the power is going through the copper. Yep, yep, yep. The power basically, it comes up through each of the arms, across the wire, and back down the other side, out to the power supply. And the only thing that gets hot is yep, pretty much the is wire. the wire. Yep, and the copper Excellent. tubing, I think, gets a little warm, but even then, it's not really hot to the touch. Won't, won't hurt the touch. Yep, gotcha. yep, exactly. Okay. If you have a metal workbench, um, you know, try not to let the yeah, metal touch the ground. exactly. But the good thing is, is this power supply has built-in fail-safes. 
So even if this does short circuit or you use a wire that's too short, because you can bend mm -hmm. this you know, to mm -hmm. whatever length that you want, the power supply will just turn itself off. Nice. So you don't have to worry about um, overpowering your power supply. Um, let me just grab a piece of foam real quick. Great, great, great. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Yeah. Um, it's got uh, adjustable arms. And this is the, the assembly here as well as over here. See how that un, uh, unscrews and that eye bolt goes on there? Or that eyelet, I should say. And here we go. All right. Back with the foam. Thank you, thank you. So anytime you apply um, heat to a wire, it's going to expand. It's just a normal property of the wire itself. So there are a couple of different ways that you can account for that wire expansion. Um, you can, uh, again, bend the arms out, um, or you can twist uh, the wire just a little bit again, and it puts a nice amount of tension on the wire, so it's not nice. sagging, basically. Okay, great. So these actually cause this to stay firm. Yeah, yeah. Unlike uh, another company that <laughs> I won't mention, that I've got to grab it in like strange kung fu grips to make <laughs> like it, uh, yeah, yeah, to make it actually cut yeah. straight. And it's actually good that you bring that up because what I used to do was is I did put um, wing nuts on this side too, but I switched it out for a nylon locking nut. Mm -hmm. And what I found is is that with the amount of tension that I apply here in the shop, is it's perfect. Is I don't over tighten it and it's not too loose, mm -hmm. so that again, yeah, it doesn't slip and slide and come together. On right, it. which is makes it difficult to work with <laughs> yeah. and even if you do you just take a little set of pliers and just yeah, twist just that just and tightens back just up. tweak it absolutely so um this is plugged in and let's see what it can do look at that there we go look at that nice so true size and then yeah. again sometimes you have to do a little bit of adjustment but either way it's really not that big of a problem. Can I play with it? Definitely. Let's, let's do it. see what I can Try do with this bad boy. Let me boy. We'll swap it around here. All right, there we go. Okay. Let me know what you think. All right. All right. Let me play with this bad boy. Have the so Serenaholic in do my shop. Workiness here and you can do like teeth or like cliff face. Um, I like how he did that. Let's see. A lot of people are doing like ooh. You can do like a profile, like eyes, teeth. Oh, very nice. Um, let's see, what else can we do? And you can use combinations of techniques, breaking along with this. Um, geez, there's so much I can do. I don't know what I want to do. You can cut relatively straight. Let's say you want to put a bevel on a uh, pillar. There's your bevel. You can go straight down. I want to keep some of the edge to do some other stuff with. Uh, so you want to do some block work. Especially if you're, you're doing more of the, um, the uh, uh, steampunk style games. You can do that. Um, I'm going to keep this as a tutorial. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and just um, for um, games like your 15 millimeter games where uh, you're going up a hill, you can do a nice gradual curve going down, long slender one, and then you've actually got two that you can use for the hill, there and there. So there's a ton of things you can do with this, we're, we're not even playing with this, I mean unless you want to. Yeah, we we're, we we'll get to it, you'll see it. So okay, I will take over and I'll let okay. you do that part. So okay. usually what I'll do when I am done is I'll just unplug one of the leads mm -hmm. and then the electrical current is cut and usually within just a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's surprisingly yeah. fast how, cools do, how right? much cools down. So I'll switch over to the bendable wire cutter now so you can kind of get a feeling on that. And let's say uh, they want to get additional wires, they can contact you for oh, yeah. additional wires and yep. stuff? Yep, and even, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a hoarder. You know, of information. Oh, like me? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, of information. Of information. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys, you know, if you want to buy large amounts of wire, um, I can, you know, Jacobs Online is who supplies the wire to me. Gotcha. You know, so, I mean, again, it's for me, it's more important for you guys to have a product that you're going to use than me really making money. 
Right. You know, I agree. I agree. You know, so Jacobs Online is who I use for my or for my wire, um, with the exception of this one. I mean, I, I get this from him, but um, I actually have to make these bendable wire cutters, um, and I'll. So you like do the crimping? And yeah, yeah, and I'll spare you, but it has to do with the resistance of the wire, um, and a solid state power supply. If anyone's interested, I can explain it to them. Um, but basically, what I have to do is is I put just a really small length of 24 gauge wire right here and what this is doing is it's dramatically increasing the resistance of this overall circuit so that I don't oh. overload my power supply okay so you know what I you know of the people who have used this I mean 24 gauge is still really strong you're not gonna break it um, but I just say you know just give a little bit of caution when you actually do bend it's a lot wire. thicker than than uh, well here's my finger yep so that's so a 20 gauge. idea yeah and the 24 four gauge, I believe, yep. is uh, right here. Thicker or smaller? Smaller. smaller. Yeah, it's going to be right. smaller. Yep. Larger the gauge, smaller the. Yeah. Gotcha. That crazy American scale of yeah. reverse thinking, right? <laughs> medieval. <laughs> right. Medieval yeah. systems of measurement. Yeah. <laughs> so this now, just with that short little wire change, um, now you have a bendable wire cutter. Oh, this is cool. This is the I stuff that that together. we have fun with. Yep, and. <clears throat> Now with this, usually what I recommend is once you plug in the power supply, give this about 30 seconds to heat up. Yeah, it takes longer because it's, it's, it's a longer wire. Mm, thicker, yep. it's heavier, so you just have to give it a little bit of time to heat up. Um, and then that's where you can kind of make your, you know, your contour cuts and that kind of thing. Which um, Remember when I made all those hills for um, uh, Black Knight Games? Mm. This is, the, this is oh. the same kind of tool I used. Let me just see here. Oh yeah. Isn't that cool how it cuts straight through? It is awesome. Can I play with that yeah, for a yeah, second? Yeah, do it. I'll show you Obviously, how I did my hills. Don't, don't touch the hot wire. Right, right. <laughs> Which you know. I'm sure you've gotten burnt once or twice. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> but like along the, um, let's see if I can find this. I can get another piece of but foam. But you see you how, uh, how this is set up here? Let's see. This is about right here. You can start moving this back and forth. And it gives you a nice sandstone effect. See how cool that looks? Oh wow. Oh that is open, awesome. Yeah. I, I use that all the time. That's one of my favorite techniques. Yep. It works really good for like sandstone. Yep. And it gives you the neat thing about it is is Oh that is awesome. Yeah. Whoop. There we go. There you go. And then you can go in and you can just pick out certain areas that you want to do again to give it a more varied look but you see how that how that works yeah yeah i love it that's awesome One i didn't know yeah. Yeah. and you can also change up your horizontal and your vertical so you've got that you if you want to do a vertical change up let's get a unique shape in here this is a good unique shape in here you can work things along the edge Like let's say you want to do like caves or something. You want to do cave walls. Oh wow. And then I can break into that a little bit more to make it a little more, again, varied. Mm. So depending on what technique you want to use, and if you want a super, uh, like a, see how this grades down? And we had that grade cut down there you can break it up a lot and move down line of your wire and you will get something that looks like that. Mm. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this and uh, actually the more warped it gets the more natural the appearances you will get mm. with this. So this is probably the tool I would use the most oh, all with right. this, because because the effect is so unique. Yeah. yeah. Um, because th this tool is very expensive with other companies, <clears throat> and like I said, for the price that he's giving this to you at, I mean, it's crazy. You've got 
Well, let's play with the table one next. Right. Okay, all right. So um, this is the tabletop surface, obviously, for tabletop mm -hmm. cutting. And there's two components that um, we have here, and these are called um, T-nut fasteners. And so these are actually another um, thing that it took me about a month to find. Um, these are called turned eye bolts. It's a three inch, but the problem that I was having is I wanted the threads to come all the way up to the eye. Most of them stop about halfway down. Right, right. And this is important because when we're setting, uh, we'll do the horizontal cutter first just because that was the part we were talking about. So the idea is, as you can imagine, um, the eye portion of these eye bolts is where the uh, handheld cutter is going to attach to. Oh, okay. And then this is what basically makes your horizontal cutter. It's a little tight here, but that's okay. Again, um, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can set these eyes at the same height and basically plane off, you know, as, you know, say an inch of foam all the way across. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I like is setting one high and one low. Because yeah. then you can For slide hills. a whole hill through. Yeah. Right. We first want to start by getting oh, one side attached. Oh, I see. That's at very least clever. Partially attached for that matter. And because like I said, the main focus of this cutter is that it's all based around the handheld unit. So you don't have to worry about, you know, changing power supplies and that kind of thing. Um, it's basically just attaching. Because it's all coming through the same house. It's all came in, yep, all coming through the table or through the handheld cutter. I've never seen a configuration like this before. This is pretty interesting. I've seen a lot of, a lot of tools. I've right. never seen one do that. Yep, and that, that was, like I said, I mean, it, it took a long time to develop this, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, again, uh, if I had a little bit more time, I would tighten the wire up. But That's fine. Um, I don't know if I have a... I'm going to grab a piece of foam. Hold it. Yeah. Go ahead. So you see how it's got the angle set up? This is really good for especially, like, uh, like full, long table, like, uh, apocalypse levels where um, they're fighting across and going up a hill or something. That's what these are really good for. And you have no idea how long it would take to sand sand <laughs> these at that angle. It'd be just stupid amounts of time. Actually, I'm gonna, sometimes I'll just grab a pair of pliers. Um, give yourself a little bit of. Yeah, just give it a little bit tighter wire. There you go. There we go. That should be nice and tight. Okay, so. All right, let's check this bad boy out. Wow. And, again, and you can double your cutting. Mm -hmm. And it'll slow down as you cut just because the heat's being consumed as it cuts. Right, right. And that's where I tell people, just go with the speed of the cutter. You know, if you start pushing too hard, that's where you're going to start to break wire. Mm -hmm, um, the mm -hmm. 24 gauge, again, is very, very strong. Um, some other companies will use 26. Um, but 20, when you get a 24 gauge wire, um, it's actually a little bit hotter, it burns a little bit faster, and it's a bit stronger. Because of the smaller diameter. Uh, bigger, bigger. Er, yeah, bigger all diameter. All of it. <laughs> I know. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so. But check that out. He's got two now. Yep. Two varying length hills. So if you were to do like a valley type uh, scenario with a valley on each side, boom, you've got one side valley over there, and you've got the other side valley over there. Very nice. And smooth, look at that. Yeah, right? Yeah, very little smooth sanding. Smooth as a baby's butt. And you can actually see how it is a little um, a little bit of a ridge right there. Mm -hmm. That's just inconsistency in cutting speed. Again, if you're just right. a nice steady hand, you're just pushing it nice and slow, mm -hmm. it'll be nice and nice sped up there. And it was just... Yeah, and the amount of sanding, I mean, if you were to sand this down, it would take forever. <laughs> the little yeah. bit of sanding you would do if you want this to be uh, uh, consistent throughout is very minimal. The, um, the other thing that's nice is you know, sort of depending on, you know, let's just say for sake of argument, this was all one height. Let's say you set mm -hmm. it at one inch, is you could just send a whole strip through. The thin strips, absolutely. Yep. And then you would have, again, I'm... there we go. So now we have one, mm -hmm. you know, planed off. Yeah, what does it say there? You go. But if we're. Look at that edge. And if you slide this, of course, you can get a little bit more heat off the wire. There you go. Get a nice varied look. Yep. That's so, cool. So that's your horizontal tabletop cutter. Very nice. So the last piece is going to be our vertical tabletop cutter, um, which is going to be similar to a... Um, like a bandsaw? Uh, bandsaw. Yep, bandsaw. Which I... 
do all the freaking time. Yeah, it was the inspiration for my cutter. There you go. <laughs> that is amazing that this does so many different things. I know. I, like I said, it's taken a long time to develop, and, I'm, and it, it, I had a lot of different prototypes. I mean, honestly, this is probably the sixth prototype that That's I made. crazy. Yep, that yeah. Is. So, and actually one of the guys, uh, his name is Francois, he's from Canada. Um, originally when I developed this, I had where the front of this uh, T just plugged, oops, just plugged, I'll just, for a second, just plugged right into the front of here. Mm, okay. But it only gave about an inch and a half on top for um, oh, cutting got it. length. Uh -huh. So what I did was, um, is I added in, um, it's just a really easy angle bracket. Oh, and okay. Basically, what it's doing is it's fitting on the front to give you another inch and a half. Nice. And what you're, what I recommend is, is put this portion on first because there's just a little bit of narrowing here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a little bit of force to get that to attach, but I promise it'll go on. Okay. So it goes on, I promise. So once you're, once you want to do the vertical table tuck, I'm just gonna leave these on just for time's sake. Sure. Oops. Absolutely. Oops is you want to put on your legs because we need just a little bit more height now. And you gotta, um, these uh, leg pieces you can still twist and rotate. So I say just in case you're working on uneven surface, mm -hmm. you can, yeah, you can angle adjust it. the legs. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna want to feed up one leg. Ah, that's how you get to that point. Yep. And then. I was curious. Yep. Okay, cool. So. Plug. Then once the wire is hot, again accounting for a little bit of um, expansion. Um, again, you can screw around. Re retweak it, it. Yeah, just retweak it, twist it, spread the arms out, mm -hmm, um, but it's still mm -hmm. the same idea. Um, and then again, this is where we just start using it like a bandsaw. You know how I use like uh, yeah, where I cut just brick upon brick upon brick upon brick. You could totally you know like my lizard man city. And we'll even look over his shoulder. And that you can fast, get, that simple, that easy. That's nice. And you can get fancy. I mean, you can get a ruler on here with clamps and that kind of stuff. So I mean, you can you can well, be plus more specific you could also if you don't. Can I steal yeah, it? Yeah, because that's that's what I do. Yeah. This is very similar to a scroll saw. So let's say you want to do like like Roman pillars. You could totally. I don't have a pencil, but that's okay, because I can do circles fairly well. All right, finding it. Okay, first, I'm gonna find, that's like a half. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can do curves, you can do circles. And again, you, we're doing this super duper fast. Yeah, you yeah. can get this perfectly vertical. Yep. So the next one is even if you want to um, actually rotate your arm. Oh, that's cool. You can set it at That is cool. Yeah, I like that. The these weren't there, so we'll just say, run it off the back. Sure, that's fine. We'll just say cut it at like a 45. Sure. And of course, we ran out a little bit of space, but. That's cool. That's cool. So with this, is. Much as we're limiting ourselves. Yeah, time and just, yeah, just come on, we gotta get this done, you know. Right. This but, is yeah. this is all like we just decided to do this right. at the last minute. Right, yeah. Four functions out of one cutter. Uh, just get a hold of me through um, really through Bill, through the website, through YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. you can go to letscutfoam.com or hotwirefoamcutterinfo.com. Just get a hold of me through the website and I'll get you guys all set up with a cutter. You know, power supply should be ready to go to um, Europe, you know, UK and um, Australia. And it's just to the US. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank yeah. you so much, Carlo. Yep.